Chapter 115, Summer 1977, Part 2 Two hours later Peter and Dorcas were snogging, rolling backwards onto the grass. Everyone was drunk, but they were probably the drunkest. Go back to your tents if you're going to do that! James threw an empty cider can at them. Do you mind, Mooney? Peter surfaced, red in the face and bleary-eyed. If we go back to ours, you can bunk in with prongs and padfoot, can't you? Oh, don't worry. Remus waved a hand. I'll find somewhere. Sirius still hadn't looked at him, and he had a feeling that after the evening's revelations, he would not be particularly welcome. Peter and Dorcas disappeared. There was a muffled giggling from within the tent, then the ghostly hollow quiet of a silencing charm. "'Share with us if you want, Remus,' Mary said, getting up to leave for her own tent. Lily nodded. "'Yeah, our tent's much bigger. Come in with us.' "'Thanks, girls,' he smiled. He really was grateful. "'You go on. I'm not tired yet. I think I'll go for a walk.' He got up, limbs stiff and aching, and headed for the sea. It was properly dark now, away from the fire, but Remus had always been able to see in the dark. The tide was in, and louder than ever. A cold breeze flew forth, and he fumbled in his back pocket for a cigarette. He lit up and inhaled deeply, closing his eyes, feeling that now he could really think. He was glad he'd said it, no matter what the reaction, but he still considered leaving. Okay, so they weren't all about to kick his head in, but who knew how they'd all act in the cold light of the morning, stark and sober? Was it better or worse than being a werewolf? He could still apparate if he wanted to go. Go and look for Grant, maybe. Remus felt a surge of guilt. He hadn't thought about Grant in a while. Maybe not all year. The other boy had always been so kind to him, taken him in and been willing to put him up indefinitely. He'd given Remus some excellent advice too, If only Remus had taken it. Stay away from posh boys. All right, Mooney? James approached him. Remus turned. Sirius was with him, looking sheepish. It looked as though James had dragged him over against his will. Remus wasn't surprised. All right, he nodded. He offered James a cigarette. James shook his head. No. Just wanted to see... If you're okay. Fine, thanks. Good. Sorry if I made things awkward. No, you didn't, James said, a little too eagerly, as if he'd been hoping Remus would bring it up first. Sirius winced, but only Remus noticed. Honestly, mate, we're glad you told us, really. Remus just nodded and looked back at the sea, taking another drag on his cigarette. Behind him, He heard James nudging Sirius, obviously trying to get him to say something reassuring and friendly, but to no avail. James spoke again. Don't run off, okay, Mooney? Remus turned back, raising an eyebrow. James was grinning. Yeah, we know what you're like. Stay, okay? Everything's fine. Even Pete wasn't that bothered. (coughs) Pete, Remus snorted. He's too busy trying to get his end away. Can't blame him, James laughed. He touched Remus's shoulder. Do you want to talk about it? Remus shook his head, looking down. He stubbed out his cigarette and immediately lit another. Sirius wanted one, he could tell. But Remus was feeling belligerent, and unless Black asked, like a normal human being, he wasn't going to get one. Thanks, James, Remus said, pointedly exhaling smoke. You're a real mate. Still marauders. James smiled tiredly. He yawned. I think I'm going to turn in. Coming? I'm going to have another one after this. Remus raised his second cigarette. I'll have one too, Sirius said gruffly. James nodded, stifling another yawn and turned away. Don't come back stinking of fag ash, you two, he threw over his shoulder as he walked away towards the campfire on the turf. Rumours returned his gaze to the sea, 
but handed Sirius the box. He heard him withdraw a cigarette, light up, inhale. He waited for it. Why'd you say that? Sirius said. Remus closed his eyes and smiled softly. He didn't want to fight, but he was ready for one. He was always ready. Wanted to. I just had to know what they'd think, one way or another. It's like you've gone and changed everything around on me. He didn't sound accusatory. He sounded hurt. Didn't mean to, Remus said. Were you expecting me to say something too? No, I wasn't expecting anything, Remus snapped. It wasn't anything to do with you, actually. Oh, okay. Sirius raised his hands in surrender, still looking uncomfortable. Just, uh, I thought that you might have told me first, that's all, given the situation. This caught Remus entirely off guard, and he finally looked at Sirius. You mean you didn't already know? How could you not know? You said you weren't, Sirius shrugged. Like I said I wasn't. Thought we were both on the same page, that's all. Remus found his anger returning. Typical Sirius, never thinking about anything more than his own personal gratification. Never once considering that anyone else had feelings or thoughts. Obviously we weren't, he said coldly. Anyway, I don't see how it matters now. If that's all you're worried about, then don't. You're safe, Remus said stonily. Not going to tell anyone about you and me, and I doubt anyone suspects you. What with your considerable history with girls? I don't see why you care so much what I tell people. I do care, Sirius protested. Remus closed his eyes. A few months ago, that would have sounded wonderful. But God, he was so tired. Remus? Sirius sounded half annoyed, half frightened. I I can care about you and not, you know, scream it from the rooftops. Wanting to get off with me isn't the same as caring. Remus, fucking hell, just because I'm not... I haven't got wherever you have yet, it doesn't mean I don't have the same... Ugh, fuck's sake. Sirius cursed at his own inarticulacy. And the girls? Remus tutted. That's... that's different. <sighs> okay. Remus sighed, his voice empty. He was willing to leave it there. Sirius wasn't. You don't understand. Remus didn't say anything. He didn't see that he had to understand. He just had to be the stronger one here. Sirius continued, a hand on Remus's arm. When I think about myself with them, I can just see it, you know? I know how it's going to play out. I know what I'm supposed to do. When I think about me and you, you know, the real me and you, it's just, I can't see how it ends. I tried not to think about it. So, I know I was a bit of a dick and I could have handled it better, but I swear I didn't want it to end like that. His breathing was shallow now. Rumors could hear his heart rate increasing by the second. I I didn't want it to end at all, to be honest. Remus nodded. He pushed Sirius's hand away gently, looking out at the sea. He knew Sirius was staring at him, but he kept facing forward. Look, Sirius, I don't mean to be cruel. I do understand all that. He really did. Hadn't he been over it all in his own head? I know it's not easy for you. Sirius made a noise of relief at that, seemed to relax slightly. Maybe they were getting somewhere for once. Remus pushed on. But it is easy for me. I'm queer, okay? I know when we started, I said I wasn't, and well, I shouldn't have said that, because I am. And I'm not saying you're queer too, or you have to be or anything, but I couldn't carry on the way we were without you, just... I don't know, acknowledging it. Sirius was watching him very closely as he said this, thinking hard. Remus knew how he looked when he was thinking, when he was working a problem through. It wasn't mischievous or cheeky or sarcastic. It was deeply solemn and serious. 
It was really bloody sexy, actually, but Rumors tried to ignore that bit. Finally, done thinking, Cyrus gave a short nod. Okay, then, he said simply. What? Remus frowned. Fucking acknowledged. Message received. Sirius stubbed out his cigarette in the wet sand. So, what? Remus gaped. We just leave things as they are? Sirius scratched behind his ear, looking down, a strange shy gesture. I'd rather not. You'd rather not? Remus repeated, dumbfounded. No, I mean, if you want me going around telling everyone I know, then sorry, but we're not all as ballsy as you. I need more time, but I could try. You could try. This was not the outcome Remus had expected when the conversation began. What do you mean? Sirius cut him off, placing a palm on Remus's cheek to turn it towards him and kissing him gently on the lips. I mean, I will try he said as he pulled away. I missed you, Mooney. Oh, you would go and say something like that? Remus grabbed him and pulled him back. It was like water after a drought, shelter in a storm. They were the still point of the turning world and every other stupid sloppy cliché you could think of. They kissed for a long time, and when they came apart, they were practically gasping with relief. No more girls? Remus asked, still holding Sirius in place, as if he might run away. No more girls, Sirius agreed. Let's see how this pans out first. Oh, charming. Remus let go, satisfied. Shut up. Sirius nudged him with his shoulder, hands deep inside his pockets. Come on, let's go back to the tent. Freezing. They walked towards the tents and the dying fire with their backs to the wind. I think I'm drunk, Remus said shakily. He felt all stirred up. I make bad decisions when I'm drunk. Sirius laughed and squeezed his shoulder quickly. I know, but I promise this isn't one of them. Okay, I'm trusting you. Unfortunately, they found that none of the tents were available anymore. The tent Remus had been sharing with Pete was well and truly occupied by the sounds of it. Sirius grimaced and cast a fresh silencing spell over the flagging one. Amateurs, he muttered. There was a silencing spell cast over James and Sirius's tent too. Mary poked her head out of the next one, giggling. It's James and Lily! Are you serious? Sirius gaped. Bloody hell! I mean, wow! I sort of want to go in and shake his hand. I have a feeling his hands are busy. Remus raised an eyebrow. "'Want to get in with me, Remus?' Mary asked, tipsily. "'What about Sirius?' "'Oh, right. Ugh, fine. I'll get in with Mars. Night, lads.' She called across the grass into Marlene's tent. Sirius and Remus looked at each other for a few moments, before Sirius climbed in first. The girls' tent was much more comfortable than theirs, stuffed with blankets and pillows and a plump blow-up mattress. I knew we should have got the Muggleborns to sort us out, Sirius grumbled as he settled in. The mattress was old and sank slightly in the middle, rolling them together in an almost comical way. In the end, the only way to get comfortable was to curl up like spoons. Is this okay? Remus asked as he slipped an arm around Sirius's waist. Of course, Sirius replied. We could just sleep. Sonoroquesis, the silencing spell. Ah, okay. Afterwards, Remus felt more awake than he had ever in his life. His brain was buzzing with questions, declarations, thoughts, words. It felt like coming out of hiding, like pulling back a disguise he had worn too long. He wanted to bear every bit of himself to Sirius. He wanted Sirius to see him. Sirius? Mm Mm-hmm. There's something else I need to tell you. Oh, Merlin... Sirius groaned, rolling onto his back sleepily. What now? I'm, um, well, I'm homeless. What? Sirius opened his eyes and turned around at once. What? Since I turned seventeen. You know, I'm of age now, so... 
So they just chucked you out? Cirrus nodded, glad to share the problem. Yeah. So once Hogwarts finishes next summer, I've got nowhere to go. Bastards, Sirius said angrily. He looked at Remus very seriously. You can stay with me and James at the Potters. They won't mind. I know they won't. Then, when school's finished, we'll find our own place. We will? Remus raised his eyebrows. Yeah, Sirius replied, happily, folding his arms behind his head. It'll be just like school. You, me, James and Pete, all together. Oh, Remus realised what he'd meant. Yeah, sounds great. I've a bit of money Lyle left me. Pfft, Sirius replied. I've got enough money for all of us. Don't worry about that. Okay, Remus said. I won't worry. Go to sleep, Sirius said. Or you'll be knackered tomorrow. Okay, Remus repeated, closing his eyes. Chapter 116 Summer 1977, Part 3 Remus woke up and stretched beneath bright canvas, Sirius breathing lightly beside him. It was a little bit too warm and sticky, but he wouldn't have moved for anything. Lying peacefully under the blankets, he could still taste the salt on Sirius's skin, feel his heart beat. At the bottom of their sleeping bag, their feet were tangled together. Sirius stirred, screwing up his face before he opened his eyes. Morning. Morning. Fuck me, my mouth is dry. Yeah, mine too, Remus agreed, running his tongue over his teeth. All that cider. I could go and get some water from the pump. Yeah, we'll both go. Reckon anyone else is up. Remus listened carefully, then shook his head. He hoped Sirius wasn't worried about getting caught. Surely no one could question their sharing a tent. What else could they have done? It was probably a bit early to start interrogating Sirius, so Remus held his tongue as they dressed quietly and quickly, fishing about in the bottom of the bed for their clothes, which seemed to have scattered in the night. Clambering out and blinking hard against the bright daylight, Remus thought that everything seemed to look different. The same, but not quite as he'd remembered it before. More realistic, solid and anchored down. They sauntered off in the direction of the water pump with their canteens, and as they walked, they fell into step, and Remus felt as though his heart would burst with joy. Stupid, really, such a small thing. The campsite was lovely and peaceful, sparrows darting between the trees overhead, and the occasional camper popping their heads out and wishing a polite good morning to the boys as they passed. The water pump was at the back of the shower blocks, and they both ducked in to wash their faces quickly before filling their canteens, as well as the others they'd brought. Shop sells pastries, Sirius said thoughtfully, nodding in the direction of a little wooden hut with a blue and white striped awning. Should we get some for breakfast? Return to camp as heroes. Good idea, Remus smiled shyly. They bought far too many Cornish pasties, but they were fresh out of the oven, flaky and buttery and warm, and Sirius had no impulse control. Back at the tents, no one had stirred yet, apparently. So Remus and Sirius decided they would take their breakfast on the beach. They sat on a sand dune side by side, munching peacefully and licking the grease from their fingers afterwards. I could get used to this, Sirius said with a grin, rubbing his hands on his jeans, sighing happily at the view. The sand had been washed clean overnight by the tide. Everything was perfect and unblemished. Never been on a proper holiday before. Me neither. Remus wiped his own hands on his corduroy trousers and picked restlessly at the grass. Oi, Sirius said. What's up, Mooney? We said no worrying. Sorry. What's up? I was just wondering something. It it's stupid, don't worry. They were quiet again. Remus fidgeted some more. He sighed. <sighs> Why me? He asked quietly. Hmm? Why me in the first place? Why not James or literally anyone else? Is it just because... Is it because I let you? Path of least resistance? Obviously not. Sirius scoffed, frowning. 
Do you mean why not James? I don't fancy James. You... oh. I think we can at least admit we fancy each other. Sirius raised an eyebrow, thumbing Remus's hip through the thin fabric of his t-shirt. Remus nodded. Yeah, I just thought... I don't know. We never touched much. What? Oh, before all of the shagging, Sirius said, matter-of-factly. I used to wrestle with James all the time, and we used to share a bed sometimes and everything. Not you. You kept yourself separate. No touching. I was... shy. It got me curious, I suppose. One Christmas. Remember when Andromeda came to the Potters? I was really nervy, convinced my mother was coming to get me every five minutes. I jumped whenever the door went. I remember, Remus said softly. Third year. Well, the door went, and I was bricking it. We were on the landing, I think. You sort of squeezed my shoulder, and... Well, it just felt really nice. It meant more because it was you. It felt like you'd, I don't know, chosen me or something. Couldn't get you out of my head for weeks. We were fourteen. So? Oh, you and Mary started going out not long after that. Yeah, look how that turned out. <laughs> Sirius huffed a laugh. Remus laughed too, despite himself. Then on, on your birthday, Sirius said, his voice faltering a bit, as if it was a difficult thing for him to talk about. You, you kissed me. I did, Remus replied steadily. Sorry. I didn't expect it. It was so out of the blue. I'd been thinking about you before that, but I didn't really know... I didn't know that I was thinking about that. Then I thought, maybe it was my fault, like I'd given off some sort of message, like I'd tricked you into it or something. What? No. Trust me, I very much wanted to kiss you. Oh. Oh, good. Because I I just felt so awful about it, you know. It was your first kiss and, and I went and mucked it all up. Uh. Remus sighed. Look. While we're being honest, you might as well know. It wasn't my first kiss. What? Yeah, the summer before. I, I sort of met someone. I never told any of you. I didn't... I didn't want you to know I was queer. <gasps> that boy, Sirius said suddenly. At the Muggle Squat, in Mile End. His name's Grant, Remus explained. Well, I hate him, Remus laughed. That's okay. He's so nice he won't even mind. Ugh, I hate him even more. I ought to try and see him this summer. He's been so good to me you don't even know the half of it. I'll go with you, if, if you want. Thanks. That's kind. Mooney, Sirius said quietly. Hmm? I'm really sorry about everything. It's okay. It's not. It is. It's not- Serious, for God's sake. You can't even apologise without starting a fight. I'm telling you, it's okay. I was being unfair, I think. I think I was asking you for something I don't even understand properly myself. Loyalty or, or love or whatever. But I do love you, Mooney. I love all of you. You, James and Peter. <sighs> yeah. Remus sighed. He closed his eyes, as if to reset the conversation. When he opened them again, Sirius looked anxious. Remus smiled reassuringly. Looking forward to seventh year? <gasps> Dunno. Bit scary, isn't it? You mean the war? The war? Sirius agreed. Other stuff too. Last year before we have to grow up. Remus laughed softly. I don't, I don't think you'll ever grow up, Padfoot. I've been so selfish. Sirius had turned melancholy again. I said it's fine. It's not, though. His brow creased slightly as he searched for the words he needed. Rumours held his breath, not sure what was coming, but somehow knowing he needed to hear it. You have so many secrets and it must be so shit keeping things back. Sirius began, gaining momentum the more he spoke. And, and I made it all worse. I just gave you more things to hide. 
I loved keeping your secret, Remus wanted to say. I'd have kept a thousand more for you. He knew that this line he was thinking of would only make things worse, so he said nothing. Sirius risked reaching out, grasping Remus's hand and holding it. Remus squeezed back. It's not that I'm ashamed of you, or this. It's, it's a million other things. I wish I could tell everyone. I wish I was ready. I will be, Mooney, I promise. Sirius looked at him, full of pleading. Remus forgave him wholeheartedly. It wasn't difficult to meet his eyes any more. James seems pretty okay with me being queer, Remus prompted quietly. He felt a bit underhanded bringing James up. James belonged to Sirius. It wasn't Remus's business to interfere. <laughs> of course he was, that beautiful bastard, Sirius snorted. Fucking prince amongst men, isn't he? I know. I know he'd probably be fine with this, even. He gripped Remus's fingers. But he's my best friend. I just don't want that to change yet. I wouldn't want to be alone with him and have him wandering. Even if he wasn't thinking about it, I would be. Okay, Remus said. He was agreeing to everything. He knew it was stupid. But it was so easy now. Morning, lads! Mary yelled from the campsite. Sirius pulled his hand back quickly, giving Remus an apologetic glance. Cheers for the pasties! They both turned around and waved at her. Sirius got up, extending an arm to help Remus to his feet. Come on, he said, eyes twinkling. I can't wait to rip the shit out of prongs for finally getting his leg over. Not in front of Lily, Remus cautioned. She'll curse your nub off. Well, can't have that. I'm very attached to my knob. Sirius? Remus? This isn't just for summer, is it? Sirius looked at him and grinned. I bloody hope not. Fortunately, no one was much interested in whatever Sirius and Remus had been up to the night before, because everybody else's nights had been just as eventful. Peter gave him a bit of a wary look, but that might have been the hangover. Mary was grinning at everyone like the cat who'd got the cream, picking at her pasty and trying to catch Lily's eye. Marlene was bundled up in blankets, looking very green around the gills and giving out the occasional moan. All right, Mars, Remus asked gently. Mm-hmm. Poor love, Mary tutted, patting her friend's blonde head gently. Went a bit hard on the old Rosie, didn't you? Still, it could be worse. Dorcas hasn't come back from the loos yet. Lily and James were sitting next to each other, but not too close. Lily had scraped her hair back into a pigtail and was consciously staring at the ground, eating her pasty with a kind of quiet resignation. James looked absolutely chuffed, but was trying not to show it too much. So, Mary grinned widely, looking around at everyone. We'll stick with the new sleeping arrangements for the rest of the week then, shall we? Suits me, Sirius said casually. And me, Peter nodded, mouth full of mints. Marlene gave a silent, queasy thumbs up. James and Lily looked at each other, then looked away. Once everyone had finished eating, the girls arranged for an expedition to the shower block. The boys followed after, towels under their arms, and Sirius teased James mercilessly. No, go away, I'm not telling you anything, James laughed. This is purely for academic purposes, Sirius chided. It's going to be a matter of historical interest. Future generations will need to know what miraculous feats you had to perform in order to finally convince Evans to... We just talked. Oh, so the silencing spell was for... James turned bright red and disappeared inside a shower cubicle. Sirius chuckled triumphantly. Does anyone want to know about me and Dorcas? Peter asked innocently. The castle ruins were about five miles walk, which nobody seemed to think was too far at all. Marlene had perked up after a bit of showering and eating, and everyone decided that the fresh air was probably best for cure for a hangover. They zipped up their tents, stuffing valuables into rucksacks, along with some leftover pasties and bottles of water, and set off around eleven. 
They followed a footpath along the shoreline, which curled around and gradually steepened into a cliff. The view at the top was breathtaking, but Remus was struggling to enjoy it much, his eyes watering and his legs burnt with the effort of clambering uphill. Sirius, Marlene and Mary had raced to the top, Marlene coming first despite her queasiness. James surprised Remus by slowing down to match his own shambling crawl. "'All right there, Mooney?' he asked cheerfully. (sighs) "'Brilliant!' Remus panted, not sure if he was pulling off sarcasm or just sounded like a terrible liar. "'We're in no rush. Take it easy.' (sighs) "Mm-hmm.' Padfoot wasn't too much of a tosser last night, was he? About the whole, uh, the stuff you told us. Remus shook his head, focusing on breathing, and a horrible grind-click noise that had started happening in his hip every time he stepped forward. Oh, good, James nodded, relieved. I just worried he might be. You know what his family was like about that kind of stuff. I was in two minds about leaving him with you alone, to be honest. But I thought... You'd just give him a thumb if he got out of order. Everything is fine, Remus wheezed. Don't worry. Good, James said, and stopped because Remus had, just for a moment. The other six had crested the hill now, and they had disappeared over the other side. They'd only been walking for twenty minutes, Remus thought grimly. He wondered if he could apparate ahead, but the deliberation part would be difficult without a map or having seen the place before. He was embarrassed having James stay back with him, but at least it wasn't one of the girls. Sorry, he said, wiping sweat from his brow. Usually not this bad, this far away from the moon. It's fine, James shrugged. We're on holiday, not a route march. Don't you want to catch up with Lily? I'll be fine. Giving her a bit of space. I think she's embarrassed. She really likes you, though, Remus said, encouragingly. She told me. I know, James smiled, getting that dopey, dreamy look as he stared over the cliff. I can't believe my bloody luck. He cleared his throat. But it was just talking, all right? That's the party line. Don't say anything to Black. Remus laughed, straightening up. I won't. They began to walk again, steadily. The sun was reaching its highest point, blazing above them so that they had to squint or look at their feet. We talked about you, actually, James said. Well, Lily did. I listened. Oh. Yeah, nothing horrible, I promise. It was probably just the cider, and we were both rambling about how you were such a good mate, and then... She said something about being brave and making your own feelings known and living honestly, or, I don't know, I was too busy being amazed that she was even talking to me. Remus smiled at James and wanted to hug him on Lily's behalf. They reached the castle two hours later, a good half hour behind the rest of the group, who had waited for them. Sorry, Sirius said, once they were out of earshot of the others. I didn't think. I'm fine, Remus smiled, trying to hide his exhaustion. I had prongs. There's a local bus that goes back past the campsite, I checked, Sirius said gallantly. We can get that back, if you want. I'm fine. The castle was a ruin, beautiful grey stone in the summer sunshine, cast against the glistening sea, hundreds of feet below. Remus could barely believe anyone had lived there, The narrow spiral staircases had crumbled and led nowhere. Long grass and bright yellow dandelions had invaded what might have once been a great feasting hall. There were arrow slits in the remaining walls, and graffiti carved into the parapets, where, no doubt, some bored soldier had waited once, a thousand years ago. Perhaps he hadn't been much older than they were. War never changed. James, Peter and Sirius began a very enthusiastic sword fight with some stray sticks they'd found, while Remus sat rolling up cigarettes on a pile of rocks, watching them. You'd feel a lot fitter if you didn't fill up your lungs with that shit, Marlene tutted. Ear for a good time, not a long time, Mars, he replied dryly, licking the adhesive strip on his paper and sticking it down carefully. 
He made four or five, just to pass the time, tucking them neatly into an old matchbox he'd saved for the purpose. He watched Sirius, playing the knight against Peter's dragon, and laughed as James captured Lily, apparently now a princess, hoisting her effortlessly over his shoulder and running for the castle gates. She laughed and beat her feet against his back playfully, and when he put her down, she looked so happy in his arms. Eventually, some of the other tourists started to get a bit annoyed with the eight teenagers mucking about, so they decided it was time to go back to the beach and spend the rest of the afternoon cooling off in the sea. Lily and James led the group this time, hand in hand, chattering happily as if they'd been this intimate for years. A pang of envy shot through Remus. Not that he wanted to hold Sirius's hand. For one thing, it was much too hot. For another, you couldn't keep Sirius still long enough. You lot go ahead, Sirius called. Me and Mooney are having a fag break. Marlene tutted once more, but hurried off to catch up with the others. Remus and Sirius sat on a stone wall for a bit, smoking. There's a pub down there. Sirius nodded further up the lane. Saw it on the way up. It's got a garden. Want to go and waste some time? Yeah, Remus said, surprised. That sounded ideal. But don't you want to catch up with James? James doesn't love me any more, Sirius sighed dramatically, holding his wrists against his forehead like an old woman about to faint. His heart has been claimed by another. Remus laughed, then dared to say, Oh well, you've got me. I've got you, Sirius nodded with a grin, hopping down from the wall. Come on then, could murder a pint. The pub was a small whitewashed cottage with mustard yellow shutters, a red tile roof and a neat row of red geraniums planted in pots outside. Inside was dark, musty and cavernous. Rumours had to duck under the low ceiling. The gruff working men, who were propped up at the bar, all turned to look as they entered, and for a moment Remus wondered if it had been a bad idea at all. Still, Sirius ordered two large pints of lager, and they took them outside to the garden, sitting on a table underneath a beech tree for shade. As they headed out, the surly barman and unfriendly locals turned back to their own drinks, obviously deciding to ignore the two boys. Remus was sure he heard one of them mutter, Bloody toffs! which he took as a personal slight, though of course it could have been much worse. Still, they were alone in the garden and had the privacy they'd been seeking. Sirius was impervious to the attitudes of others. Maybe he didn't notice. Maybe he just didn't think muggles were worth worrying about. It's great here, he said, gulping down his foggy warm beer. Do you think we could live here when it's all over? I like London. Remus replied. It's what I'm used to. Remember you promised we could go to Carnaby Street, Sirius said, playing with Remus's matchbox. This summer. I'm holding you to it. When did I say that? Christmas. Oh, right. Okay, we'll go. Can't believe you forgot. Well, you also spent half of Christmas trying to convince me to get a girlfriend. So, ugh, Sirius groaned, apparently in shame. Sorry, I thought it might help me feel less attached to you. Sounds a bit bonkers now that I think about it. Now it sounds bonkers. Remus kicked him gently under the table. <laughs> Logical thought processes are not my forte, Mr Mooney. Sirius laughed, with an aristocratic turn of his head. You ought to make peace with it if we're going to, um, if, if we're going to start going out, Remus prompted gently. Sirius gave him an apologetic smile. Going out, yeah, he agreed. Sorry. You'll get there, Remus said casually, gulping his pint. And with that, the ice was broken, and they began to talk, and talk, and talk, it was easy, after months of failure to communicate, it seemed that the gates had now been flung wide open. They found that at once they had begun, they couldn't stop. Remus would relate some assumption he had made, some belief he'd held about an interaction long ago, and what he thought it had meant at the time. And Cyrus would shake his head with wide earnest eyes and say, 
But Mooney, it wasn't like that at all. Remus discovered that much of his misery was his own making, that most of the time Sirius had never meant harm, and often hadn't even known he was causing Remus any pain at all. It was just his own bungled idea of what was going on. They even talked about Mary. I did really like her, he said. I think that's what threw me off in the beginning. You know, it wasn't like girls weren't doing it for me in that department, and she was so confident. I thought you were with her just because you didn't want to be with me. No, Sirius said firmly. That's a horrible thought. It was for her, not for you. He looked at him. Sorry. <laughs> Don't be. That actually makes me feel better. Anyway, Sirius smirked. What about you and Mary? Oh God. Remus buried his face in his hands. Don't. I'm so embarrassed. It's fine. I liked it. Sirius raised an eyebrow, giving Remus a look so sultry it would probably get him arrested in some parts of the country. I noticed. He blushed. Didn't help you feel less attached then? Apparently not. I couldn't believe you didn't mind that. And yet, when you find out about Chris... Sirius straightened up, looking annoyed. Him, he grumbled. There's nothing between us. We're just friends. And this other bloke, Grant, was he... Sirius shifted, obviously uncomfortable as he struggled to get the word out. Your... your boyfriend? Not really, Remus replied easily. It's hard to explain. He's... a friend. I care about him as much as I do you and James and Peter and the girls. More secrets, Remus. Sirius ran his hand through his hair, frustrated. I can't keep track. I don't know how you do it. Can you stop hiding stuff? From me, at least. I don't know, Remus said quietly. It'll be hard. But you can try, Sirius smiled. Remus chuckled and nodded. They finished their drinks and decided to head back to the campsite. I'll teach you to swim, Sirius offered. Oh, fuck off, will you? Remus snorted. Is there anything else you've been keeping secret, Remu? Sirius nudged him as they meandered slowly downhill. It was much easier, the way back, but they were going very slowly anyway. <laughs> no, Remus laughed. He felt as light as air. It was like being high, having nothing to hide at all. Queer, illiterate, homeless, werewolf. He took them off his fingers. I think that's it. Oh, and my mother. Your mother? I got a letter in that box of depressing stuff from Dumbledore. Photos and, and a letter. An apology. Oh, blimey. Okay. What did it... No. I don't want to talk about it yet. Sorry. That's fine. Sirius shrugged. Let's say we can talk about anything at all. Except our mothers. Perfect. Remus nodded. End of chapter 116.